Hi guys, I wanted to give you a review very quickly of the newest uh, episode of Spartacus. Uh, and this being the first episode of the second season of Spartacus entitled Spartacus Vengeance. A little bit of background for those who don't know. Uh, Spartacus as a TV series is based on the idea that a guy named Spartacus uh, was put into the House of Gladiators and rose all the way up the ranks of being a gladiator to uh, basically eventually overthrow the House of Bardi Artists and then eventually uh, lead a army to uh, basically conquer all of Rome. Now, um, here's the thing that I really want to emphasize to you about Spartacus. The first season uh, starred a different actor Andy Whitfield, and um, Andy Whitfield was fantastic in the role of Spartacus. He had the conviction, he had the heart, everything that we could have actually have hoped for in sort of a Spartacus slash Gladiator slash 300 type television show. It was perfect. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that actor Andy Whitfield felt ill and uh, was stricken with cancer, which he beat, and then it came back. Uh, right before he was going to begin filming on season two of Spartacus. Uh, so what the producers did was they made a prequel series, Spartacus Gods of the Arena, and that series uh, served as the rise of the House of Body Artists and introduced us to Crixus and a guy named Gannicus, um, who uh, was basically the lead of that prequel series. Uh, the one thing I should say here is that after that series was completed, uh, sadly Andy Whitfield passed away. Um, and that was a very big blow to me because I respected that actor so much uh, and immensely hoped that his uh, cancer would go into remission again and that he could rejoin the crew of uh, Spartacus. But alas, that is not so, and now we have a new guy, Liam McIntyre, the guy that I basically picked in my head to be Spartacus when they were showing the front runners. And now we have the first season of the new series of Spartacus, season two, which is Spartacus Vengeance. Now, in the first episode, uh, we basically learn that Spartacus is basically what I would like to call a bandit. He's on the run with his group of gladiators and a bunch of house slaves from the um, House of Barty Artists. And of course, everyone in the House of Barty Artists is kind of gone or dead because Spartacus and his men killed them all. Um, and while that is very sad um, uh, that they're all dead and gone, you know, Spartacus is trying to basically get revenge for all that he suffered. But in trying to get his revenge, he's forgetting those who are most important to him, like his wife, the friends he made who are gladiators, all that kind of has gone out of his head in favor of vengeance. Um, and we're introduced to some new characters that I don't remember the names of because all the Rome names are really hard to remember. Basically a new character that uh, replaces the previous uh, lead in John Hanna and a bunch of other side characters. The one character from the first season that returns is Lucretia and her best friend, the blonde, I think whose name is Alithia. And um, basically what happens is Alithia's husband, when she comes to, uh, when he comes to the house of Barty Artists, uh, finds Lucretia basically driven insane by all the craziness and chaos that Spartacus caused in the first season finale. Uh, still there in the House of Barty Artists, and uh, the Alithia's husband uses it as an opportunity to basically show the people of Capua that, you know, the House of Barty Artists is still standing and they're going to make it bigger and better than ever. And um, also, you know, they're going to bring upon Spartacus a giant manhunt to destroy all the gladiators and all the slaves that escape from 
the House of Bardi are just in a revolt. Um, while this seems like a great plan, we all know that Spartacus is going to be smarter than that. He's going to work really hard to try and basically make things right, bring peace to Capua, make sure that all the slaves are freed, make sure all the gladiators know what's really going on in the politics of what's going on in the city of Capua uh, are going to be explained to those who Spartacus frees and hopefully they decide to join Spartacus band of rebels. Um, for me, I think that this episode told us a lot about, you know, what was going on inside Spartacus's head in terms of, you know, how he's dealing with life now being a rebel, kind of having to hide in the shadows as opposed to being able to fight in the daylight and, and send messages the normal way through blood, violence, and suffering versus what he has to do now, which is, you know, be quiet, be silent, and when he does, you know, killing or, you know, surfing through for intel uh, in Capua, what he has to do is keep his ear low to the ground. I really like this first episode called Fugitivist very much. Uh, not only because it was re a return of the series that I loved so much, but I found Liam McIntyre, you know, quite good in his role as Spartacus. Not quite as good as Andy Whitfield, but he sported some of the similar traits of being a good leader wh who spoke with conviction. And when it came time at the end uh, to act with conviction as well, um, I think that there's still a lot of life left in this series if the series is told properly. Now I think the whole idea of having to be a band of rebels is going to get old after a while so they'll have to find a new way to integrate the rebels into society for the show to work for the uh, 10 episodes that have been commissioned and the third season that has been commissioned after that but I think the creator is smart enough to um, basically really give the characters a fleshed out life. Um, there's lots of blood, violence, and gore, and tons of sex in this show, so this show isn't really suitable for younger viewers. However, if you've seen the first season of the show, or you've seen the prequel series, uh, Gods of the Arena, you basically know what you're in for. And if you love Spartacus as much as I do, you're probably just as interested to see what journey this new actor, Liam McIntyre, goes on uh, while he is transitioning into the role of Spartacus. Because I'll tell you, replacing another actor on a drama series or a sitcom is hard, but replacing an actor on a drama series or a sitcom that was as beloved as Andy Whitfield was uh, in the um, kind of action sci-fi community for his brilliant portrayal of Spartacus in the first season, that's a tough job. And I think Liam is up to it if he continues the evolution of his version of Spartacus over time and does his best not to repeat the same kind of uh, personality traits that Andy Whitfield uh, was known for and instead create his own for the character of Spartacus. Overall, I really love this first episode of Spartacus Vengeance and I hope you guys did too. I'm really looking forward to the second episode just to see what is going to happen next. I know that the the person that they chose to uh, follow John Hanna as the lead villain will probably not be as strong or as menacing as John Hanna was in his role, but that's okay because I'm going to leave the series room to grow. So if you've seen Spartacus Vengeance, or you've seen Spartacus Blood and Sand, or Spartacus gods of the arena, please let me know in the comments below what you thought of that show. I'm really curious to see if there are any Spartacus fans out there and if they've seen this episode, what they think of the show. Until then, I will see you guys later.